Breaking Table is brought to you by Nikki Hits Beauty Studio, Bona Musadi, Duala, and Jungle Hawk, Boya. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Joan Gomba, Yana and Kuo are with me and this is Freaky Table. We have a special guest in the house all the way from Niger. He's here, kind of, forget about his name, he's a Cameroonian guy from Manu Division, Omunya. I don't know wherever he's coming from. Hi guys, we have GD Kene in the building, how you doing? Uh, as long as I brought a new one, clapping for guests. I, yeah, see. I, I don't on, understand. <laughs> I'm very hospitable. Ooh. You really feel comfortable being around me, right? But not with them. No, see, you see. Hands yeah, very, see, see, this guy is very dangerous. Very, Let me just warn you for him. It's very dangerous. Dangerous house. Dangerous. Don't put there in Ghana. You like it? You like it? You like it? You like it? I like it. <laughs> Guys, we have a special guest in the house and we're going to be talking so much about his career. But how do, how do we use his career to impact actors from Cameroon, right? So you have to pick one or two things from what he's done already. So we've exhausted the, the topic of Nigeria-Cameroon collaboration. Why it doesn't happen? Why should it happen? Why should it not happen? And we don't want to talk about it. So we want to really find out about you. Okay. From a teenage actor to a Netflix superstar, how did that happen? Um, no, you start to start to start to talk. <laughs> oh, it's all oh. big. Oh, 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 no, no, see, no, I don't get it. You see, you see, you are oh, ready, ready to face the local person, but the local person is not with you. You saw what I told you about this guy. I told you about this guy. He's a very bad influence. Stay away from him. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. Has he introduced you to? Oh. I saw him eating potato and egg the other time. Very. Oh, <laughs> the cuisine, you understand? The local cuisine, you understand? Okay, okay, that's why this was called freaky. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah freaky, freaky table. Freaky. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. Um, Cameroon has been fun. Um, I'm probably going to three weeks. Yeah, uh, I, came in, I came in 23rd, and it's almost uh, 10th now. Yeah, yeah. so um, it's been fun. Love the food, love the people. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, cuisine? Cuisine. Uh, because you know you have two means of cuisine, trying to understand which one you mean. So you have to ask well, so that you can ask <laughs> How are the girl how the girls cheated you? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the, the girls have met on my trip here. Um from the movie set to I just finished filming. To where? <laughs> to Boya. Wow. Yeah, I just finished filming that one day. So it's been fun. They've been nice people. Yeah. Very warm people. Okay. Very warm. I like the word warm. Like it's just, it's just looking at everything. The thing is, you've been, you've been going around with Chichi like that. He's a usual suspect. So I, I have no doubt that you feel warm. <laughs> you make you happy. You me very well. Good. Okay. Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> everything nice. Everything soft. Like this boy, but so you, so you're just getting to to Boya. Yeah. So how are you enjoying the climate, Boya? Yeah. See, there is always it's like it's like Ghana and Niger jealous, right? Boya, yeah. Like that, but then um, Boya is very calm. Yeah. Boya is very uh, exotic yeah. and touristic. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the cool. Let me give you a point. Let me give you a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One day is more. It's Some more. People. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Do all like the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but but Boya, I really yeah. love Boya. From arriving through the road before I even hit the city, yeah. the mountain view, the clouds. It's beautiful. Awesome. I see. It's, it's my even changed. <laughs> Just wait until you eat the food. And the local cuisine. And the local cuisine. And the local cuisine. Too. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're definitely, I mean, we're asking all of these questions because we've watched a couple of your films and most of the films, it's a lot about love, bad boy, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I saw in the way you were dodging that cuisine question. So I, was like, like, I thought you were the bad boy. Oh, you know, it's movies now. Yeah. You know, you have to put up for that in mm. films. So it is not real. You mean bad boy? Yes, you are not a bad boy. You know, so. Even depends. the cuisine taste. It depends. It depends. It depends on 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 what we're talking about. The town. 
know. Yeah. He's, because he's very geographical about, <laughs> about his bad boy, bad boyishness. Yeah, he he's very geolocated. Yeah, he's very geolocated. Yeah. Town. He said the town. Yeah. Because of yeah. the yeah. town. But, but I loved your performance on um, uh, Living in Bondage. Quite frankly, um, so uh, this guy told us last two weeks ago, uh, Effa, Effa, was saying also, you're in, you're in Cameroon. What am I doing, Effa, if this... <laughs> Someone who was jumping on that. I'm the biggest fan. I'm the biggest fan. This guy is very okay. Yeah, you know, because we've had, we've had almost everybody from living in bondage. We've had Ramsey Noir. Yeah. We've had um, uh, Ina. You know, so yeah, this 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 is this is not the ice and the cake. This is the combination. <laughs> <laughs> that movie, your character, everything, your expressions. I mean, it was really intense. Like, wait a minute, seriously, that Nyongo. Uh, okay, um, <laughs> what they call money ritual. <laughs> yeah, they call him Nyongo. So maybe that's where you should learn. I've learned that one. Now. Oh, oh, that was fast. That was fast. Yeah. Okay, oh, just now. Okay, just now. Okay. okay, can you pronounce it? Nyongo. Nyongo. Okay, so that's you giving your children for money or whatever. Or your parents. Oh, yeah, or your parents. <laughs> like the people you move with. The cuisine. You can just give your recipe. But I want to eat it. I love it. I love it. But my kids. See, this is a bullet. That's what you're saying. Oh, even a small salad. It was something for Homer. But your role there was very, very intense. The, the role you played. How, how did you did you prepare for it and, and acting along Ramsey? Can be easy, can be easy. But um, you know, there's a lot of young talent both in Nigeria and in Cameroon, and all they are looking for is the big break. You know, so even when I got the job, everybody knew. Okay, people are the few people are new because most times they tell you don't put anything. You know, just walking behind the scenes, speaking to some veterans will let you know the impact or the expectation of the work you're about to do you know some people that have been doing movies for 35 years mm -hmm. telling you that they're scared to touch this project it's legendary they mm -hmm. don't want to mess it up yeah. you know it was, was it was the very first yeah, yeah, yeah. and the very first one yeah. that we did in nollywood we, we hadn't done a remake to living in bondage was done how was it that was it like like getting cast for that role like, like the, the whole experience how did you get the news what was your feeling well, to be honest it's just like when you buy a new car yeah you know you always want a new car so you buy a new car, then two weeks later, you have to, you know, go into maintaining the car, looking like the person that owns the car. So it was a lot of pressure. First of all, knowing that every single male in the industry, including those I look up to, wanted the same role. It was such a big project. It took three years from announcing it to make it. You understand? So to be honest, it was, it was... I felt on top of the world getting it, but I knew that that was not the time to rejoice. Yeah. Yeah. You can only rejoice when it hit the cinema. So even after I finished filming, everybody was saying, nice job in the studio. I was too scared to watch it. Okay. I watched it the first time at the premiere. Okay. My wow. colleagues had gone to see it, yeah. you know, at the producer's office or something, yeah. something. I was just too scared. You know, when they see me, when I come for a photo shoot, they're like, superstar. I'm like, I ah, better go. <laughs> but but you, you, you got the superstar treatment after that. I mean, your, your career. Well. Yeah, that's that's what literally brought me out. I wasn't even living in Lagos at the time. Yeah, I wasn't living in Lagos at the time. You know, I was where were you? In the Bazons. In the streets. <laughs> yeah, I would literally went from, you know, nobody, you know, to the guy that my colleagues would say they respect your talent. And it's one thing to be a colleague, and I think for people to say, oh no no no, yeah. this guy, yeah. Like I've never said that to him. <laughs> I was I was a man of the year two years last year. Never. I was a man of the year last year. So can I be like, why not on record? Why we don't record? There's no respect. <laughs> None. Anyway, just just know he's just jealous of me. You understand? I mean, you can see he's jealous of me. No. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, he's jealous of me. <laughs> but to be honest, um, you know, it was it was more humbling. Yeah. Than anything, you know, he's had to like. Just, I remember the first day I was sitting down with Ramsey and just looking at him, I'm like, that's that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, the first day I saw, I went in a car trip with him. I told him the last time I saw you, bro, I was like 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was going to church with my mother in the bus and I saw you in front of your red convertible, yeah. you and Liz Benson, and he was like, stop, don't make me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> so how old are you? So in, uh, sorry, yeah. you know nowadays when you don't old, you can't go back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm 30 now. 30, yeah. okay, I mean, um, He's older than you, just less successful. <laughs> just what? <laughs> What's wrong with you? 
<laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Please focus on the show. You should focus on the show. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Hey, look, be ready. <laughs> I think I'm going to go by this place. Yeah. No, 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 no. Chelsea and his time with Rassi the Rassi. biggest movie. Yeah. I, and then you are here talking with Jones and me. <laughs> and then you play how you think, sure, you don't. <laughs> this is the biggest you're blown. You have to this one here. <laughs> Elonge, Elonge, go home. Come, go home. Go, go home. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we're just starting. Yes. <laughs> no, but it's great. I mean, I see your switch in characters. Like yeah. living in bondage was massive. I, I, ne I never even thought that you could, I could see a softer version, the guy in love, the guy doing this. But watching your other movies, Kambili, you fell in love with your best friend, and then Bad Boys. <laughs> 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 so first of all, guys, I do not know Elonge from anywhere. He's probably referring to one of these guys. But <laughs> wow! You could have written that script by just sitting here. <laughs> this, this guy, this guy. If, if you are following this guy, you will not do this interview. So please, let's focus. Can you move this guy out to this place? <laughs> <laughs> but how do you how do you get into character like mostly because we really want to know how you moved from a teenage actor to this netflix star um, but, mm -hmm, and then a model and yeah. then this human great human being well thank you very much um i don't know how the move happened but you know how the motto is sometimes when i go on facebook yeah. which they call meta now mm -hmm. when you go <laughs> When you go there, you see posts from 2010, and you will see the things I used to write, and you can only tell that it's about belief. Yeah. You understand? Somebody, I would say, I remember in 2016, I did a collage of different pictures in one picture mm -hmm. of Tanayo Kanayo, Kite Dochie, and I said, I want to be in a ritual film. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward three years later, living mm -hmm. in bondage mm -hmm. happens. You understand? So it's part of the tongue. Not just that you're saying, but you're walking towards it. So I think the only process for which I have, of which I am here today, I didn't even think it would happen, but it happened this fast. Mm -hmm. I was so relaxed and so comfortable in my ideas and methodology mm -hmm. that I said I didn't want to do small films, you know. So even coming to Cameroon and seeing that you guys have African Magic EP and all of this, and I'm like, hey, too. I wish I shouldn't have done all those films so that by the time I come, everybody will know me. You know what I <laughs> yeah, but exactly. So I try to do um, big projects only. I don't know how to fly under the radar at yeah. all. You yeah. know, when it comes to movies, I like it big. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, um, I think I for the past, let's say give or take 10 years that I've been doing this, um, what I try to do is wake up every day with more hunger than yesterday. Mm -hmm. You understand? And you cannot... It's not music. You can't just go into the studio and record something. Mm -hmm. It's not an individual effort. It's a team effort. Yeah. The script has to be right. Your co cast like, living in bondage, you can't just give it to me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of star power. The Kanaya, Kanaya, Andrew Keke, you know, mm -hmm. Ramsey Noah. There's a lot of things that made it living in bondage. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So if the movie movie is, when it, when, it, when it clicks for you, you will get better one. You know, even the ones that you, I mean, look at Squid Game. They wouldn't have thought. Yeah. They wouldn't. They would have wanted to just make a lot of money in South Korea, but it took the world, you know. So wake up every day with the same hunger or double the hunger that you had yesterday, and you know never. You don't take it literal, right? I know your life is waking up every day with double hunger. Yes. <laughs> Boy, you understand? Everything is double, double, double. Everything is double. <laughs> it, it Everything is the double. The hunger. The hunger. <laughs> you've been there for ten years and doing it, and you've moved from you no know, CDs and now. On Netflix, I, I mean, what, what how's, how's that been for you in terms of, in terms of transformation? You went to the CD era. I don't think I made the CD era. No, I mean, when I, I mean, when I talk about CD, I mean, like, if, if 10 years ago, Netflix wasn't there right now. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The whole CD era. I mean, how's that transformation been for you in terms of the growth? And then, I mean, the projections you have, it's especially for, for, the, for, the, for African cinema on, on, on the yeah, border. Well, right well, to be honest, um, I think I did the CD era. Because I remember that mm -hmm. the very first movie I was lead in, not short film or anything, but movie, um, Poker Messiah, 
me, you let go cheer, and I still be. I remember that was my first ever. And in that one, actually, the movie never came out. Yeah, for some reason, it never came out. But that particular project, I feel like the project that prepared me for living in bondage, you know, because you walk back to back, no rest. And, you know, for a cinema film, they want perfection. So you must do it over and over and over and as near good as possible. So I think I remember that I used to use my, my mother's car and take the posters because I didn't want to hear story. So when we were anticipating the movie coming out, I would take the posters at midnight. Now my friend will use Gary. And, uh, you know, it's how you put it in, um, yeah, it becomes like, uh, it becomes like gum. Yeah, I would post my own posters with my hand all over the city. And then sometimes people be like, ah, I'm not visible the way they post this and I need to be posted. <laughs> yeah, for real. I will post it. Like, like, so much of posting. Yeah, because I didn't want to hear stories. You know, you, say, you can tell the same thing from how I promote my films on my Instagram page. I make sure that I go all out because what's the use of making the film if people won't get to see the film? Mm-hmm. You know, so cinema in Africa, I mean, we, we woke up at a very strange time. Mm-hmm. At a time when people no longer really, really dig going to theaters, yeah. you know, we're now moving to the uh, digital platforms, Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, Rock, Rock TV, Iroko, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Africa um, um, Showcase, you know, Showmax, Showmax, I'm sorry, yeah. So all these things means that we're in the turn of an era, which also implies that one thing we must try to do is to make sure that we don't focus on the old and forget the new. So we keep trying, you know. So for African cinema, I think um, there's no better way than to join our voice. Mm-hmm. Because if, if only Nigerians watch Nigerian movies and only Cameroonian watch Cameroonian movies, we're still divided mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to be able to break the intercontinental and international boundaries and be sure that our, our, our films speak international volume. Mm-hmm. You know, when you watch an Asian film, you can tell that it's an Asian film. Mm-hmm. When you watch an American film, you can tell that you can't be more American than the Americans. Yeah. So we must focus on Africa, mm-hmm. you know, with our costumes, with our, our languages, mm-hmm. with our set design, and make sure that what we are selling is Africa. Because if you're selling American substandard or below standard American uh, sets mm-hmm. to Americans, they will, they will wonder what you're doing. What is, what is African to you? Because we, we, there is this to me, it's, I don't know whether I created a debate and I'm debating myself, but oftentimes the movies that, that break through Western cinema, which are African, depict Africa in very poor taste. Yes. So it is farming, um, poor children, widows, you know, yeah. cancer, so hunger, and all of that. And yeah. these are the movies that they, they meet the stereotype of what um, the West want to see of Africa. And so they say, oh, this is African reality. Mm-hmm. But you and I know that, true, there is hunger in, in, in parts of Africa, mm-hmm. but that's not necessarily our reality. So when you say African, is it in line of these stereotypes that have been put out by African cinema, which fits Western standard, or you think that there is supposed to be kind of a reimagining of how African stories are supposed to be? Okay, well, well, I mean, take a look at, for example, Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah. It's something that we will have to emulate, yeah. you know, because um, we're used to watching Indian movies or Chinese movies where they are very poor. More by more, you see them, you know. <clears throat> They moved on from that karate, yeah. only karate, only tai chi, and they went and show, showed us the rich side of things. Yeah. We have billionaires yeah. here, mm-hmm. so it depends on whose um, point of view you are telling the story mm-hmm. from. You know, I was talking to my friend yesterday. I said, when you tell a story through the eye of the poorer people or the less lesser privileged or the people that you call the lower class people, mm-hmm. if you tell the story from their angle, what you're making is a documentary. Mm-hmm. But if you tell the story from the eyes of a person who has understood that Africa was there, that um, um, at the modernization, technology started in Africa. If you tell the story from that side, they call it lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because you see some people every day, you see, like when I went to Yaoundé, I saw bats. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> but people who see it every day would ignore it. Yeah. So to them, so like, like, like we like to say, no matter what you look like, there's somewhere where you're exotic. No matter what you look like, there's somewhere where you Yeah, when you got here, you were so tall. <laughs> when you got here, you're so tall. It's, it's so tall that you look so exotic. You look like, like some exotic bird, like some creature that fell from some, like some asteroid. 
<laughs> so, so to be honest, when you say Africa, yeah. what comes to my mind is when we are having dinner, yeah. expensive dinner, what is the food on the table? Mm -hmm. Is it the, the achu, the eru? Is it, is it the local <laughs> delicacy? Oh, 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 you had the whole oh, oh, menu. Oh, 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 menu. Oh, 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 menu. You're not training, you're not training. <laughs> 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 well, what, are, what, what are we doing? Or are we putting English breakfast on display? Yeah. You know? So what, what are we doing? Are we using cutlery to eat the swallow? Or are we using our hands? You know that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's what I mean by Africa. That's yeah. what I mean by show us or show, show us in the yeah. modern light. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And even down to the suits we wear, the prints you want to put on, yeah. you know, are you preaching Africa? Are you, are you, are you, thank you very much. Okay. At least, no, you should have something that somebody can post and say, no, this was going to you, but, you know. It did not give you, you're trying to just take it away from you. Joe, focus on your job as a... <laughs> but, but about, about it is as, as a young person in what would be your advice to other young Cameroonian uh, film actors, especially? Is this sustainable? I'm talking about more. Yes. You know, because oftentimes people have to drop out because it's they, they cannot take care of themselves. But let, let me just add to that question. I, I watched your interview with Ebuka the other day, and you were talking about choosing roles that you could reject scripts. And Ebuka asked you a very pertinent question. If you keep rejecting scripts, how do you sustain yourself financially? So that ties with yes. um, what he was asking. Well, you see, Sometime many, many years ago, I can't put figures to it because I'm, I'm not sure, but people like Leonardo da Vinci, mm -hmm. yeah, we, 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 those are the people that we call artists, mm -hmm. um, philosophers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So people like Leonardo da Vinci wasn't a rich man. You know, it was people like um, Lorenzo de Magnifico who sponsored his artistic discoveries like the guns, the bombs, and so on and so forth. So there was a time when artists, uh, um, the, 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 their pay, their, the respect they want from you is, no, sorry, the, the money they want from you is the respect, mm -hmm. the name, mm -hmm. not affluence. Mm -hmm. So the time when artists were, was contented with living in the countryside and creating art from there. But nowadays we have artists and times have changed where we need paparazzi mm -hmm. or need expensive mm -hmm. bling bling. Mm -hmm. You know, and stuff like that to be able to feel like you're being successful. Yeah, yeah. That's an football you won't play. You understand what I'm saying? So in that same way, <laughs> nowadays, nowadays we have celebrity tailors. Yeah. You know, nowadays we have celebrity anything, yeah. gate men, celebrity um, personal oh, assistants. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So that being yeah. said, right? <laughs> that being said, you'll find out that um, sustainability is something that is relative. Mm. What I mean by that is that as an actor, if you're making great films, you don't expect that because you make great films that your generation will automatically turn you into a millionaire. You must find satisfaction in the job that you do. As a matter of fact, the real artists are crying right now that the industry is saturated, mm -hmm. which means that there are so many people once you find, once you feel say you rich, you don't get money, you don't work at home. So if there was- Is that, thing that, that, is that directed at you because you're fine? You. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you feel like it's you know every other industry you have to study something or get some sort of certification before you can do the job yeah so if you feel like you can just walk in maybe that's the reason why that's the reason why the system is trying to self-protect itself mm -hmm. by not being automatic money trees mm -hmm. you understand what i'm saying but the thing is i tell my friends i will make a billion from this industry before my time is up here by the grace of god mm -hmm. the reason is I know for a fact that Africa is next, if not for any other thing. You know, you know how um, modernization goes from old China to Roman Empire mm. down to Greece. Uh -huh. We know for a fact that look at whiskey, look at what what, the, what we are doing now yeah, in the cool. music. Yeah. So who 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 says that we can't take the entire movie industry and bring it here? You know, I'm the best thing because I'll tell you something. What's up, man? So that we go, you know. Uh, what I can tell younger, <laughs> what I can tell, what I can, what, what I can tell younger Cameroonian art, actors is number one, it's not even by age. Yeah. There's a lady that recently passed, you know, um, God rest her soul. She started acting at eighty something. It was in Black Panther, 
I don't know if you guys know that lady, that woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was in Black Panther. Yeah, so sometimes your karate is about, I mean, um, um, people like Morgan Freeman, you can tell you how what age, somebody like Jackson, yeah, yeah, yeah. what age their careers blossom. Yeah. So it's not really about age. You know, it's about how much success you have. And one thing I can say to everybody is, if truly, 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 this is something you enjoy doing, stick to it. If it doesn't give you money, it will make your name forever. Mm-hmm. One way or the other, you must get paid for the work that you do. That's it. Black Maria. Hmm. First of all, why is it Black Maria? I, I don't understand why Maria is being so it's a film you're doing painted. It's painted. Done here. Yeah. yeah. So it's what we candy, 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 candy love. No. <laughs> we candy Loris, right? <laughs> so that film is with Candy Loris. Um, she's a producer, executive producer. Yes. Okay, good. By the way, congratulations. What's the film about? Why? Why is Maria Black? Because uh-huh. the one from BBN was just really fair, fairer than you. <laughs> well, Candy Loris is really fair, and she played Maria. So, yeah. well, it's a story without giving out much. Yeah, you know, yes. Nobody likes spoilers. Yeah. Anyways, um, it's a story that um, tells about metamorphosis of an individual. You know, abuse from childhood, what the trauma is like in older years. And it's also generally just tells us how we better appreciate that everybody's different. Mm -hmm. You know, you meet somebody and they're not available for love right now. It simply tells you that, (laughs) it simply simply tells you that there is a reason. You know, there's something called right motive, wrong time. Mm -hmm. So Black Maria is the story of Maria and her walk through life, stages through life, marriage, wanting kids. It tells you actually, the story of the average female, you know, every man just sees beauty and all he wants is, most men, not every man, what sees beauty and what he wants is soccer, comfort, be a woman to me and I'll give you what you want, you know? So a lot of things goes down in the story. It's very um, educating, educating. So maybe um, Candy would be in a position to say much better. Oh, I'll play the role of Nathan, Candy's husband. In the story. Yeah. Were you a good husband? Well. Or you the violent one? You see, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so, you see, you see, so, you see sometimes, <laughs> yeah. sometimes um, um, the beginning is not always going to mean the end. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah it, just, uh, it depends, you know, how you are moving around and catching crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You plan on doing more yeah. movies here. Most definitely, I really enjoyed my first experience yeah. making well, you know, you know, my first time here. Met some really good actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met, met a host of talented actors. Most times when I want to, uh, you know, list their names, uh, memory fails me mm-hmm. as young as I am. But um, Jeffrey Pule. That that one is that one is just that one is something that 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 that's not you, you don't have to. So it's not an effort. <laughs> it's just natural. And to show. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solange. Yeah. Solange Ojong, Yijika. Oh, okay, great. So, 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 so very much impressed with the performance of Candy Loris. Because mm-hmm. most times production can really take you away from, and you look like you just made yourself lead because, uh, yeah, and because she's, one, one, and from what I learned as well, she's been on motherhood break for some time. Yeah. So I really was impressed with, sometimes one thing I can assure everybody watching this is that, I cannot do the movie with a female actress and it's bad performance. I love synergy. Mm. You understand? So when you watch Living in Bondage or Can't Believe. Yeah, no, I love. <laughs> so I love, I love, I love synergy. And one thing Candy really, really did do is understand her character. Mm. You know, I just relaxed and watched her play her role, and it was so good, yeah. so good. So I can't wait to see the movie Black Mary. I'm sure she will say the same thing of, of, of you. I mean, uh, not, not just as praise, but I'm saying based on um, precedence, right, for me, mm. what you've done with them, um, giving them bondage. That's my reference for, for you. Yeah. I have to watch Well, have you watched him in Kambili? No, I've not. I've not watched oh, he fell in love with his, he fell in love with his best friend. No, I, yeah, I'm smiling for him in particular. <laughs> If I, and, and his girlfriend was Nancy. Nancy is very fine. It's not for long. It's not for long. <laughs>
Wow. <laughs> no, we follow, we follow, we are keeping up. Don't yeah. worry. Keep and up. and that's the plan for Nigerians mm -hmm. moving forward because um I mean we really love progression yeah. in Nigeria and we will love it. I mean, Ghana is two countries away from us. Mm -hmm. You pass Benin Republic and you pass Togo to get to Ghana, and Cameroon is like right next to us. Yeah. Come on, boundary. Yeah. You know, but our flight ticket is very high yeah. like, compared to Nigeria's yeah. Ghana zone. <laughs> you may mention your interview with uh, with Ebuka. You may mention that you still, perhaps you will still or you're still doing Enugu films. Yeah. Here in Cameroon, we call it Asaba films. Like, you know, it's not like yeah, Lagos yeah, standard and stuff like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you still, you still do that. And, and why? Why do you do? Is it for, to, like, a give back to the community? You want to feel at home? Like, so the thing is, I have a, I grew up in Enugu. And Enugu is like one hour, 30 minutes from Asaba. Mm -hmm. So Enugu used to be the hub for movies. But when you went to Asaba, then spoil and falls. <laughs> so the, the truth is, when, I, when we say Asaba, of course, we're saying the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Why I would still do it is because there's a lot of people who can't afford internet subscription. There's a lot of people who data is too expensive for, who still buy CDs and download online. So I want to share my talent with them, you know, because when I, like, for example, one time I did a movie about HIV and some guy somewhere on the road and hugged me and cried for like 12 minutes. And maybe because either himself or somebody he knows went through the struggle of HIV. Mm -hmm. So I love to make it believable. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I serve the dish like that, I don't want it to be just the sports children. Mm -hmm. You know, you, all of you here who watch yeah, Netflix. Yeah, I know. I, I cannot understand poverty. <laughs> <laughs> so I want everybody to be able to get a bite of the cake and, you know, have, have, to, have to experience my talent as an actor. So that's why I think that they have great stories in the East. Like I can't forget a movie that actually influenced me so much into loving this game or this work is uh, Across the Border. Mm. So Across the Border, Omu Nobi Okwe, um, Jerry Amilo, you know, it was so good. So if they were able to create such an industry all from Asaba, mm. we can't throw away the water with the baby. With the baby. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so the, the truth is, they have great stories, maybe not the right technology, maybe not the right camera angles or the new ones. But then that's why filmmaking is relative. Art is relative. Somebody will draw one kind of thing, they yes, and I want million dollars into the film. Yeah. And that person will draw very well and sell it for you 50 pounds. Yeah. So at the end of the day, what it means to everybody is that call me when you can't even afford my rates. Mm -hmm. If your story is super, I'd like to etch my name in history by doing it. You know, yeah. So sometimes you're very keen with your name, eh? Like yeah. I mean, my name. As we look at Ikorodu boys, they left from doing um, stunting movies to being sponsored by Netflix instead of production. Do you one day see that your influence probably um, can take that same um, this that same logistical for um, uh, um, advantage, right? That Ikorodu boys have to Enugu. Most definitely, I look at, for example, Lionheart. Genevieve mm -hmm. brought all her arsenal mm -hmm. to shoot in Enugu. Even living in bondage, some part of you are certainly not wary. Mm -hmm. You understand? So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of movies, even there's a biopic, the first Nigerian biopic on former president Babangida, mm -hmm. who everything was shot in Enugu. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So you see that people are actually understanding. Lagos is overcrowded, to be honest. It's very difficult to film there. So many people are filming Abuja, Enugu, but you know, you can't really, you can take a village girl out of the village. You can't take a village out of the girl. Thank so you. there will always be... Filmmakers in Enugu who want to make it as of a style. There will always be people that want to just make it simple because the market woman will not understand the big English you're speaking in. Yeah. Uh -huh. They would rather watch certain kind of comedies and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I feel like definitely I would take something there. I would even want to make something well shot, but as of a flavor, you know, not mm. packaging, yeah. not phonetics, yeah. 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 you know, that flavor, that raw, aki and popo kind yeah. of vibe. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to make something like that. Maybe better camera angles and all of that. How, but how, 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 how I, I, I have, I, I usually perceive of um, actors as people who have to grow up very fast, um, especially when you start as a, as, as a teen, teenage actor and that. So how has your life changed? You know, um, have you done a lot of growing up? When you talk, there is, there, you're so layered. Like, you understand everything. Yeah, knowledge base is solid, a lot of that. And it's not, it's, I'm not saying that um, I've dealt with a lot of 30 year olds to know that not every, not everyone is that sound. 
<laughs> what did you have to do in love with and how was it like to Well, to be honest, I um I wasn't a teenage star. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I did a few things which we can say went unnoticed. Yeah. Safe to say that. Yeah. So going into it, I remember the very first time I went to an audition in AGN. That's Actors Get of Nigeria. So not the one that you do on national on TV, small, small shows. No, 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 the main one. The very first time I went to do that, I remember that we, I, I didn't make the audition. So we came to set and my director then was NSW and he had like a lot of, he does movies where you have like 300 people, 200 people. And then my, my colleague then was like, let's go and meet him. He'll have something for us. And I told him and I said, that's not how I want to meet this man. I want to audition. I want to get the role. I want to get the not, not just put me as palace guard or one thing, one thing. So that, that being said, right, I've always known what I wanted, more or less. You know, you just keep playing, um, praying for blessing, you know, for bigger roles and for people to keep calling you, you know, because acting doesn't have any retirement age. Mm. So to be honest, grow, in terms of growing is by accident and learning mistakes and picking yourself up. You know, I remember the first time I got a sub lead, after two days, they casted me. I cried so much because I wonder when next I won't get them, I won't get them again. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And sometimes you need money. Yeah. You know, the average person cannot depend on movies to grow up, to, to, to move up. You have to have something that funds you. Maybe your parents are rich. You know, you have to package well because sadly so nowadays, Instagram numbers matter who they cast. Yeah. As far from time when they need a particular person like living in bondage, they don't care who, how popular you are. They have to get somebody that would work for the role. That's at very few exemptions. Other than that, you need some level of packaging and success mm -hmm. for media to want to associate with you. So maturity will come with heartbreaks, mm -hmm. tough times, mm -hmm. tears, you know, mistakes. That way, you, you learn, but try to learn fast. Like try to know when and when not. Because for example, it's very easy to be the lead character living in Bondi and disappear two years after. It's actually very easy. There are people that did one very big movie like Ratu Snake in the olden days. I really wonder where the lead character is now. Although, of course, on Instagram you can find him, but he's no longer doing movies. But how has it been though? Relationship as a young person. Well, well, and in a relationship and all of that. Well, well, well. I was a model before, like I when I when I when I decided to stop doing fashion modeling, like runway modeling, that was when I now focused on film. That was 2014 when I said, okay, let me focus on this thing, give it time, let me see. You understand? Not just that uh, if it happened, it happened. Yeah. So as a model, I already was on runways, naked body, six packs, all mm -hmm. of that. So girls not today news. You understand? Mm -hmm. So a lot of lots of girls will say nice things to you because you know they fancy you. But it's sorry to disappoint you. You know, you have to be to avoid scandals, mm -hmm. unwanted babies, mm -hmm. baby, baby daddy problems, all of those things. Because sometimes it really does limit the career. Yeah. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. it does. So it depends on what you want to put in the forefront, enjoyment or the work, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So I, I, I heard about, a lot about Cameroonian hips mm -hmm. and... Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard... <laughs> <laughs> so I heard a lot about the Cameroonian hips, yeah, yeah. you know, no need, no need for lipo, no need for surgery, all, everything, all, they, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh! <laughs> Let me ask, like, I'm just getting it. Wow. <laughs> so I'm wondering what is, whether it's what people eat here. Is it the arrow or the... Well, I'm working for my salvation. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm very particular about things that I, I'm very particular about things that might distract me from the Lord. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are going higher and higher. Amen. You are going there today. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who says that is the devil himself. So yes. <laughs> oh my God! Today we can we can sit with you all day to discuss on on everything. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Yana Kaur, thank you guys so much for coming. Yes, guys, no, forget about this guy. You answer this question. Guys, you can follow the discussion on our social media pages at Freaky Table. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel to follow this amazing guy.
interview and he'll be there to co- maybe answer a couple of your questions if you have more. It's at Decoded TV Studios. Please subscribe. Tell a friend, a friend, and your mom to also subscribe. My name is Joan Yanako Jide. It's a goodbye. See you guys soon. Freaky Table is brought to you by Nikki Hits Beauty Studio, Bona Musadi, Duala, and Jungle Hall, Boya. Jungle Studios, which is located at Solidarity Junction, Boya, for all your photography and we videography. Thanks for watching the dopest TV show right now. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can continue seeing our beautiful face. Scratch that, my handsome face. <laughs> Alright guys, and to never miss a thing, follow us on all social media platforms at Freaky Table, Instagram, Facebook, and yeah, stay tuned.